everybody. I'm Jamal Collier. I'm uh, hosting the Edward, Edward Jones Reporters Inbox here. I cover the Nationals for MLB.com. Uh, it's a big day here at Nationals Park. We're hoping Bryce Harper's return to Nationals Park. We're hoping the rain kind of holds off here uh, to get this started. I'm going to be answering your questions about the Nats here over the next couple of minutes. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first question comes from Mitch or Mike Helms. Uh, he wants to know what's going on with the Rendon extension talks. Uh, you know, at the end of spring training is the last time we kind of checked in and got an update about this. Uh, you know, the two sides uh, are still optimistic they can get something done eventually. The Nats want Rendon. Rendon has expressed his desire repeatedly to kind of remain in D.C. And, and be a part of the team long term. But um, the sense I've gotten, these two sides are pretty far apart right now as, as far as terms go. Uh, you know, there's still a long course of the season that both sides are open to negotiating during the, the, during the regular season. So there's no kind of hard deadline uh, from the start of the season or, or coming up right now. So I think that um, right now I, I don't think these sides are that particularly close to getting something done, but I think they remain optimistic that eventually the, the Rendon will be here in D.C. for long term. Uh, question two comes from Paige. Uh, we've got, uh, at, does the Nationals bullpen have the potential to improve? Um, it was not a not an easy weekend for the Nats bullpen. You know, this this past weekend we saw Trevor Rosenthal struggle. Five guys that he faced all reached base, all scored. Um, you know, Kyle, Kyle Bearclaw had his his kiss struggles. Tony Sip struggled a little bit on, on Sunday. Matt Grace uh, as well threw a lot of pitches and Wander Suero. So I think you know, in general, it wasn't the, the best opening weekend for this Nats bullpen and kind of exposed. I, I thought coming out of spring training, this team was maybe a, an arm short in the pen and it kind of got exposed over the weekend. I think it's maybe too early to panic all the way right now. I think there's still a lot of arm arms that the Nats feel confident about, uh, but they really need Trevor Rosenthal to be the guy that they, before Tommy John surgery, surgery in 2017. Uh, he's just so important in this bullpen as the first guy right in front of Sean Doolittle. You know, they, they, they really don't have an, a, a lot of depth behind him as far as setup options, you know, and, and if, once, if you have Rosenthal kind of in the eighth inning and, and have that locked down, I think that having Kyle Bearclaw, having Tony Sipp and guys to mix and match in that way would just make this bullpen uh, a lot more settled and a lot more, you know, uh, successful going forward. So I think this bullpen does have a chance to be very, very good. I think that they still might be in a situation in a couple of months where they say, hey, we need to add an arm or potentially two to really get through the, the push of the, the season into the postseason. Um, but I do think this bullpen is better than what they showed over the first couple of days, even if they do have some kind of room for improvement so far. Question three comes from Colby. Uh, are the odds still unlikely that ownership uh, will pursue Kimbrell and get him signed? A lot of people were concerned about the bullpen after that first weekend, which is understandable. Um, I don't think that the stance has changed right now on, on Craig Kimbrell. I think going over the luxury tax uh, is still kind of a non-starter right now for the Nationals and for ownership. Uh, I think that the team, they, they, they're interested in Kimbrell. They love to have him. They love to kind of add him to the pen. But I just think that, you know, right now, depending on what the price is going to be, and it's kind of in, unclear exactly what Kimbrell's demands are, uh, I just don't see the Nats all of a sudden extending themselves after a couple of days to, 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 to go past the stance they had in the spring. So I think that's something they'll have interest in, and they'll kind of continue to monitor that market. But I'd be surprised if the, the tenor or the tone has changed so quickly uh, from where it was a couple of weeks ago, and that was just a non-starter going over the, the competitive balance tax. Uh, question four comes from John. We've got after Acuna signs his extension, is there any tangible interest from Rizzo to extend Soto? Uh, can they extend him now if they're not under the luxury tax thre uh, threshold? Um, you know, I think the, the biggest thing with Rizzo, and, and I talked to him a little bit during the spring about his philosophy, just with extending guys and, and buying out arbitration years and such. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for him is he wants to make sure he gets free agent years if he's going to buy out an arbitration year. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if he's going to to, to guarantee Soto some kind of contract going forward after just kind of one season, which was really, really good. And the Nationals expect him to kind of continue and to stay uh, as productive and as, as, as talented as, as he was. I think the biggest thing for them is they want to get something to pay off on the back end of that, whether it be a year or two in free agency on, on the back end. Um, as of right now, I don't think these two sides have made any kind of real progress in, 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 in t uh, along the long, on, the, on the road, I should say, for those talks. Uh, Scott Boris, is, uh, who represents uh, Juan Soto as well, and it's just generally not been uh, his MO to kind of start those talks early but you know the Nets really like what they saw from Soto they have high expectations for him and I think they would like for him to be here long term um, but I just think that right now that's not something that they've been broached uh, at this point early on in Soto's career. Our next question comes from Charles. He wants to know, when will Michael A. Taylor be back? We miss him. Uh, well, yeah, the Nats certainly uh, have big plans for Michael Taylor to kind of split center field duties with Victor Robles. We've seen kind of some of the, the growing pains that Robles has had to start off the year uh, in center field defensively and on the base pass. I think that's why they wanted Taylor to play as much uh, as they did. Um, some news from Davey Martinez here from his press conference just kind of moments ago here at Nats Park uh, that they're going to have Michael Taylor start a rehab assignment. They're aiming for Friday in Harrisburg. Um, he's a guy 
now who who came off that he had the the injury in the outfield uh, during spring training where he dove injured his left knee and hip. Uh, he's made some pretty quick progress and they, they're pretty excited about that. I would think that he's got to get some reps in the outfield, get some reps running around and kind of getting used to used to that before he's ready to come back. Um, but the, you know there's an end in sight here. If he's going to start playing in some games, you figure over the weekend, uh, you know maybe four or five games, get some at bats and be comfortable. We could see Michael Taylor at some point next week. Our next question is from Joe. What do you think Robles' ceiling is for this year? Uh, that's a tough one. I think that you know, Victor is, is, I think, one of the most talented players in the National League. There's tons of young players in the National League as well. And I think that you know we've seen just how good and dynamic he can be at the plate over this, this opening weekend. Um, I, I picked him to win the National League Rookie of the Year before the season started, and I stand by that prediction right now. I think that um, even some of the, 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 the things we've seen, and the, mis the miscues on the outfield, the miscues on the base paths and such, um, I think those things are going to get cleaned up as the season goes on. The Nats are really confident that he's eventually going to be a very good defender and a very good base runner. Uh, and I think that he's just going to be a really, really good all-around player. I think that, you know, he's still 21 years old. And to be 21 years old and in the big leagues and making these mistakes on this kind of grand stage is just not the norm uh, for players. And I think that the Nats want to give him room to grow and, and, and uh, to develop. Um, and they're, they're willing to live with these growing pains right now. So I, I still think they, they have high hopes for Victor. I still feel that Victor Sealing is, um, you know, a very good three or four or five win player and, and a guy who's going to be, you know, in the outfield and impacting this team and this lineup for years to come. Our next question is from Steve. Uh, which player on this roster do you think is underrated? Uh, this is a tough one. I mean, Anthony Rendon seems like he wins the most underrated player every single season. Uh, you know, when the players or people kind of vote for, vote, uh, vote on that, um, you know, I think that at some point after and Rendon is called underrated every single year, it, it, you know, you no longer call him underrated. Um, so he's coming the first one I think that, that goes to. But I, I still think um, that people don't really know how good Adam Eaton is. You know, he's a guy who the, the Nats traded a lot for to get uh, the, the winner of 2016. That was, I think that you know him at the top. Of the lineup is just such a, a, a change, just an impact and game changer for this lineup. To, when you have a guy who, you know, has a good on base percentage like him, who takes as many pitches as he does, that plays as hard as he does, um, and this really just kind of gives you something every single night. Uh, you know, we've seen short glimpses of it. He's he's you know been 300, 400 uh, every time he kind of does have any extended period. Uh, you know, before injuries have hit the last couple of years, and I think that seeing a full season of Adam Eaton, and the Nats are really excited about that, and something that I think is going to have just kind of a huge impact on this team and this lineup over the course of an entire season. Um, he's He's the guy, just because I don't think that Nats fans and people in D.C. have really seen what this guy can do. Um, and I think he's a really good player, a uh, really good four or five win player to be able to contribute if his defense gets back to where he was before the injury, especially going back to right field. Our next question is from Kimberly. Uh, who are the talented relief pitchers in the Nats minor league system and who could be potentially ready to join the team uh, as soon as that need arises? Um, you know, Austin Williams is, is kind of the first guy, I think, that, that jumps out to me. You know, he had a really, really good spring. I think he uh, didn't allow uh, uh, didn't allow a run. I think 20 of his, 21 of his first 24 guys, he, he retired. Uh, he's got really good swing and missed stuff. And he's a guy that, you know, I thought they might even try to find a way to keep an extra arm in the bullpen to keep him on the opening day roster. Uh, you know, that didn't, that didn't work out. They obviously, with the off days and such, they didn't really feel the need to carry an extra reliever. But I would guess that as soon as the first kind of wave of, of, of call of the first time they need an arm or such, Austin Williams is going to be, you know, if not the first, one of the, one of the top guys that will be called up. Uh, to, to, to kind of impact this bullpen. I think, you know, they like his swing and miss stuff. They like, uh, you know, just kind of the, the, the way, what they've seen from him in very short competition toward the, the sh short just kind of time toward the end of last season into the start of this season. Uh, Austin Williams is a guy who I'm pretty high on as far as bullpen help that will be able to probably help the Nationals this year. We've got a couple other guys they're excited about. They saw some good things from, from uh, Hoover, J.J. Uh, uh, Hoover and um, – uh, Vidal Nuno stayed in the organization as well, the left-hander who had an opt-out clause, got another one coming up uh, later this summer. But, you know, they feel like if they need another lefty in the pen at some point, Vidal is a guy who had some success last year in, in Tampa Bay, and they think that at some point this season might be able to come up and help them if they do need it. Uh, we're going to take one more question, and this one is the kind of the big one here today. Uh, it's from Michael, and do you think Nats fans will boo or cheer Harper here tonight? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of a, a, a bit of a cop-out saying that, but on one hand, I think that there's a lot of people in this fan base that are really, really 
angry, uh, seeing Bryce go somewhere else, and not just anywhere else, but seeing him go to division rival, seeing him go to the Phillies, and and see, uh, you know, just just to, to have to face him as many times as they do over the course of a season. I think there are people who are going to be kind of angry with that. There's a lot of people who know they had a lot of very very good times with Bryce and, and a lot of great memories, and he kind of helped lift this franchise uh, from his arrival is when they, they they started you know winning their run of division titles and such. And I think uh, the people really appreciate that and respect that. And I think that you know coming off his goodbye post on Instagram this morning and just some of the things he said in his, his, his press conference earlier today um, that I think that uh, you know Bryce is going to, to, to probably get a bit of a mixed reaction but I would think it'll lean toward cheers uh, well that's all the time we have for today I want to thank you all for joining me on the Edward Jones reporters inbox I'm Jamal Collier uh, we'll see you next time